Evolution is a lie. Oh, God has a plan for me. God's plan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, God has a plan, and, and there is a God. Okay. Oh, shut up, will you? Will you stop going crazy in there? I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. And so we come to our fifth creationist to be named and shamed. He is guilty of the following infractions. The evidence is all across his videos. I will deal with only one of them here. 70 years of laboratory experimentation with genetic mutations has proven that mutations cannot add up to cause new morphological features or permanent morphological change of any kind in any species. The 70 plus years of lab experiments that Nephilim Free refers to here do nothing of the sort. There is an in incredibly intelligent process in every living creature called DNA recombination. DNA recombination? I think he means genetic recombination. Recombination can also occur in RNA. The only term that resembles DNA recombination is recombinant DNA, which is an entirely artificial process of selection and can extend to genetic engineering. Genetic recombination is not an intelligent process. It does not have a consciousness and there is no evidence of a decision-making process. It's been estimated creationists using numbers and probabilities usually doesn't bode well for the creationist movement that one out of every one to two million mutations slip past this ingenious process and become permanently in the genome of that organism. A quick note on genetic recombination. Mutation is the ultimate source of variation. Without variation, there could be no evolution, so mutations are of great importance to evolution. This document, also included in the sidebar, will provide an explanation of how mutations work in concert with genetic recombination to allow for increased variability. The most important aspect of this article is this one. Recombination can shuffle existing variation and lead to new variants. Consider two diploid individuals, and a cross between them can produce these individuals assuming recombination along the chromosome. New types previously not present in either population that may have different phenotypes from either parent. In short, this completely destroys the creationist argument that recombination prevents mutations. Recombination actually increases phenotypic diversity, giving natural selection more choices to work upon. But what we observe about genetic mutation is always negative. This claim is repeated here as well. Many scientists have proven with mathematics that the negativity of mutations could never be overcome by the what we call a neutral or even what evolutionists think are beneficial mutations. And they're not beneficial either. Nothing good, nothing new, nothing novel. The first example of a beneficial mutation is also a recent example of a rare genetic trait introduced into bacteria. Other examples of beneficial mutations include the ability to see in additional wavelengths, the ability to safely process saturated fats, increased bone density, muscle mass and reduced fat levels, the ability to digest nylon. You have to be in the most, the utmost state of denial to believe. The mutations can cause evolutionary change in light of 70 plus years of evidence. Isn't it amazing when a creationist tries to use evidence that supports the scientific theory of evolution and then claim that this evidence actually supports creation when it does nothing of the sort? You can find with, with your browser easily literally dozens and probably dozens upon dozens of research papers by evolutionist scientists. Indeed, this is correct. If you look online through a search engine, you will find hundreds, if not thousands, of peer-reviewed papers that explain how mutations are mostly neutral, but also deleterious and beneficial. His claim that mutations are mainly harmful is based on a claim by Henry Morris, now deceased, for obvious reasons that I really should not have to explain. This is clearly false. A few minutes looking up beneficial mutations should clear up any ignorance. But I'll also provide a link to a resource that backs up its claims with references. The jury is in. It's been in. For decades. Science does not work by popular vote, nor does it work on the principle of a jury trial. Making any illusion otherwise is disingenuous. About genetic mutations and their effects on living things. It's never positive. It's deforming. Creationist tactic number 11. 
when an explanation shows you to be utterly wrong, ignore the explanation and reassert your original claim. This works on the basis that any lie repeated often enough will be believed by your audience. DNA recombination doesn't know from what the mutation is. It's a non-discriminatory process. It can't examine a mutation and say, hmm, this one looks like it could be beneficial. We'll let that one slide. It doesn't. It just finds a mutation and says, uh-oh, I need a backup from grandparent of, Gino, uh, of, you know... Oh, that's enough of that, but let's ask this question. If the genetic recombination does not know about the difference between beneficial and deleterious mutations, how can it distinguish between mutations that have become a part of the genome from a previous copying error? The molecule is cut, the, gene, the mutation replaced with the backup copy. This is a Dwayne Gish argument that has been refuted. See this page on Talk Origins for more information. In fact, copy errors get removed by DNA recombination themselves. You might wish to check your facts before making a video. You and I ranked right up there with Ben Stein for creationist nonsense. It's not perfect. One in every one to two million get by it. That only pushes the idea that mutations can stack up on top of each other and one affect another and another into the abyss of impossibility. It's always amusing for a creationist to try and use probability arguments as a means of disproving a theory that they have absolutely no understanding of. Doctors like Dr. William A. Dembski, two PhDs in mathematics, yada yada yada, has got a list of credits as long as it's on. Nephilim Free has now demonstrated the argument from authority fallacy. A bit more info on William Dembski. He is a fellow of the Discovery Institute. He is a creationist and an evangelical Christian. As pointed out, his PhD credits are in mathematics and philosophy. He has no biological qualifications whatsoever and is therefore not qualified to attack evolutionary biology. But most evolutionist scientists will tell you that mutations produce exactly what creationist scientists have been saying all along. And what would that be then? That evolution happens? Oh no, wait. You're lying again. That's what we observe in the laboratory. Nothing else ever, 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 ever. Repeating a lie does not make it any more true. Repeating a lie when you have a bad case of obsessive-compulsive disorder is laughable. So it's one thing to believe that this can happen. And most evolutionists are knowingly ignorant. They hear a guy, you know, say, in a video on YouTube, Oh yeah, it happens. And they swallow it. What, you mean as opposed to a guy who comes on the internet and says, Evolution is a lie. Is that what you mean? Then you see they're operating on faith. They're in great denial of the truth. The fact is that the only one who is either operating on faith and in great denial of the truth is a creationist such as yourself. Science has granted humanity a wealth of knowledge and products of such knowledge that have had countless benefits for countless lives and has given us comforts that we would not have gained otherwise. Creationists seek to undermine scientific progress by being intellectually dishonest in an attempt to reinforce belief in a religious dogma that has given humanity nothing. In summary, Nephilim Free has been found to have committed each of these fallacies in his videos and has demonstrated that he is another lying creationist who deserves to be named and shamed. Remember folks, if you're going to make unsubstantiated claims based on a 2000 year old book of myths that has no evidence in support of it and then make accusations that people who accept evolution is a fact are themselves guilty of being in denial of some truth without providing sources to back up your claims, you're going to get laughed at.